Hi all. Now that you understand the acidity of the alpha protons of aldehydes and ketones, and now that we've seen ways to make the enolate anion, we can now do a very famous reaction called the aldol reaction. If you can master the aldol reaction, the rest of unit 8 becomes very easy because the other reactions in unit 8 are just variations on this very fundamental, very famous reaction. A lot of textbooks and websites simply call this reaction the aldol reaction, but technically it is a base catalyzed aldol condensation. And we're going to draw as a final product in each of these first three reactions, we're going to draw the condensation product. Now, let me show you the mechanism for the first reaction. Before we get started with the mechanism, let us evaluate our starting material. We have an aldehyde. We know that this alpha hydrogen is fairly acidic. We have a strong base. And that's it. So what could possibly happen? We could form the enolate, but then what? So here we have our starting material. If we're going to make the enolate, which we are in almost every action that we're going to see in Unit 8, you have to draw out the hydrogens that are on the alpha carbon, the alpha carbon you're going to use. You want to draw out the base with its lone pair and go ahead and grab that proton, make a double bond, and kick up the pi bond to make the enolate, the oxygen anion enolate. We know that the enolate has resonance, but I'm not going to be concerned with that. Um, we're going to move on. What can we do with this enolate? If you recall our conversation about kinetic and thermodynamic enolates, hopefully you remember that actually in this reaction, which is reversible, we get mostly the starting material. What that means is that we have a lot of the original aldehyde that can be reacted. There's our original aldehyde. When I think about the aldol reaction, I think about the enolate attacking another one of itself. But it's going to attack its original form, and you're going to attack the carbon that's partial positive, the carbon of the carbonyl. To wait, the way to show that connection is you're going to reform the double bond between the carbon and the oxygen and use this pi bond to attack that carbonyl carbon, the one with the dot, and you're going to kick up, again, the pi bond to make the O minus. Again, we're going to keep everything in reverse, or have everything reversible in equilibrium, and here, if you follow your arrows, we connected the alpha carbon to the dot. Actually, in this step, we created water. So let me write that somewhere here. And we're going to use that water molecule to protonate. And again, make it reversible. We have this protonation here. And what we form is the aldol product. Not the final product, because we still have to do a condensation or a, you could think of it as a dehydration. But here we have an aldol product. And you can see from the name we have an aldehyde alcohol. So this is the aldol product between uh, the aldehyde and itself. Now when we use the ketone in the bit, it's still going to be called the aldol product. Now a lot of textbooks say you could stop at this aldol product, but when you're under basic conditions, you really should push forward and make the dehydration. So dehydration is a class of reactions that fall in the condensation. Because we are condensing water, we're kicking out water. You'll see little droplets of water in your round bottom flask. Now, the interesting thing about this mechanism, it's probably a mechanism that you have not seen before. We're going to take this base that we just created, and we are going to deprotonate 
this carbon right here. It's still the alpha. So you know that this hydrogen is still acidic, and we're going to make the oxygen anion. When you draw the mechanism, it is essential that you go through the oxygen anion. Do not eliminate. It's very tempting to eliminate the OH right away to make the double bond here, but that does not happen in real life. What happens in real life is you form this oxygen anion. Here's the dot. Here's the alpha. And we did create water, but we're not going to use it. But I still like to draw it. So here we have a very important intermediate. This is the oxygen anion of the aldol product. Next, we're going to bring this lone pair down. We're going to jump this double bond to the right. And now we kick it out. Ultimately, look what you get. You get the carbonyl, and you make a double bond between what two carbons? You make a double bond between the alpha and the dot. You also created, or you kicked out OH-, and that's why I say this is base catalyzed, because now that base can continue the process over again. Now, it doesn't matter to me whether you make the cis or trans alkene. It does matter, though, that you move on to the what's called the aldol condensation product. It's basically an elimination. It's a dehydration. For this aldol condensation, it's typically going to be five steps. The pitfall when drawing the aldol condensation mechanism is that it's very, very tempting to go from here all the way to the product by pushing uh, this bond to the right and kicking out OH. But again, that does not happen. This is a very special type of mechanism. In this step here, where we kick out, we consider this the leaving group, that's the rate determining step. Typically, for a elimination reaction, the rate determining step is when the leaving group leaves. So we only have one molecule involved in the rate determining step. This is called an E1 mechanism. But it's a special type of E1 mechanism because in organic chemistry 1, remember the E1 dehydration? It was via a carbocation. This is not a carbocation. This is an E1 mechanism that goes through, we're going to call it the conjugate base, the conjugate base of the aldol product. Many of you have not seen this type of mechanism before. It's called E1CB, unimolecular elimination conjugate base. Okay, um, So that is the type of mechanism we're using for this dehydration. Another thing that you want to notice about the product is that your double bonds are called um, conjugated. So we have a conjugated. Uh, in this case, we'll call it an ene, own. You have a, the, um, oh, here it is, the alkene. And here's the own. It's like the, the keto group. Now, I know it's an aldehyde, um, but you could also do this with a ketone, and that's where the name ene, own comes from, alkene, ketone. But uh, it also applies to uh, the aldehyde equivalent. It's conjugated, meaning that it's, stable and you get stable double bonds when they are alternating double bond single bond double bond we're not going to get into the reason why conjugation as stability that's in our next unit when we talk about dienes and enones but this is the driving force the driving force is to make this fairly stable aldol condensation product and it's Again, it's conjugated. Now, can you apply what well, we see in this mechanism, well, first of all, to this product? So what we're doing is we're making a double bond between the alpha and the dot. Now, you just have to be super careful because after you make the aldol product, you got to make sure that you have another hydrogen to remove to do this dehydration on the 
in this case the right hand side to make it conjugated. You know if this these two hydrogens were methyl groups we would all have two methyl groups here and then we would not be able to do the dehydration on this side we would have to make it on this side of the OH but that's beyond the scope of this video what's more important is that can you draw the product fairly quickly without having to go through the mechanism now here we have the alpha carbon if you need to you could draw the molecule that it's going to attack and put a dot here and just pretend or just visualize the connection between those two we know that from our mechanism that we're going to form a double bond between the alpha and the dot and yep what happened to the oxygen remember it became a hydroxyl group and then via the E1CB mechanism we kick out the OH this is not going to be very easy at first what I suggest is that you practice the mechanism and then go to other problems and see if you could fill in the products without having to draw the mechanism but it is essential I think that you understand what's happening in the mechanism to accurately draw the conjugated enone product with that being said can we draw the product now without visualizing or drawing the mechanism do some scratch work here we have two alpha carbons but the molecule is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which carbon I use to make the enolate again we are going through the enolate and we have a another base this is sodium ethoxide ethoxide looks like this and we're still gonna get the same situation with ethoxide as we did with OH minus we are going to make the enolate but not in a hundred percent yield right we need some of the enolate and we need some of the ketone to remain neutral so here's the attack okay and remember we're making the double bond between the alpha and the dot if that alpha carbon has at least two hydrogens right this one had three this one has two if it only had one again we wouldn't be able to make the double bond conjugated but let's not worry about that now the trick I like to use is I like to say draw the attacker as is but move that group out of the way because I like to have the attack going to the northeast going up to this dot okay now think about we are going to make this connection, but think about what's connected to that dot. That dot has two alpha groups. In the mechanism, okay, again, you'll need to practice that first, I think. In the mechanism, you'll realize that this oxygen eventually leaves, just like we had here. You could visualize for the aldo product, there was an OH right here before dehydration. There's an OH right here before dehydration. So let's draw that connection. We had dehydration, but what else is connected to the dot? You have two ethyl groups. Ethyl, ethyl. Another way that you can um, maybe visualize the product very easily or quicker is that when you look at the mechanism, when you go from this aldehyde to this final product, what bond was made? The bond that was made was this one right here. So do you see how we have a two carbon aldehyde and our product is four carbons. It's literally two plus two. This is C4. Take a look at our more complicated example, the ketone here. That ketone is a five carbon molecule. The bond that we made was this one right here. So I'm going to emphasize again, here's the dot, right? those are your two pieces this was the enolate and this piece was the ketone that was attacked okay. now that now that we have this product go ahead and practice the mechanism it should be five steps again just like we had for this uh, aldol reaction with starting with the aldehyde again the aldol can be done with an aldehyde or a ketone as long as you have 
hydrogens on the alpha carbon. Okay. And then for the condensation product, you have to have at least two hydrogens, either two in this case. Over here we have three. Okay. How about this ketone right here? This one's interesting because when we make the enolate, you still have two alpha carbons. But you notice that you can't make the enolate to the left because there's no alpha hydrogens. We have to make the enolate to the right. Okay. So eventually, what is the connection? The connection is between this molecule, which will become the enolate, and this carbon right there. And if we either visualize or literally we could draw a dotted line for the connection, okay. we have that alpha connected to the dot. It's always going to be alpha connected to the dot. And if you have two hydrogens here, you will be able to draw the condensation, you, which is the double bond that's conjugated. Again, let's use our tricks. Or why don't you pause the video and you could take it a little bit slower. See if you can draw the product, the condensation product, in this aldol reaction. The way I like to set it up is I draw the attacker as is, but I'm going to twist this bond so these other two carbons are out of the way. One, two. So that is this molecule. I just twisted it a little bit. Uh, I like to label my alpha just to remind myself that it's that alpha carbon that's connecting to the dot. Because this alpha carbon has two hydrogens, I would be able to make the double bond there. And then I just have to copy what's on the dot. Now, I do like to make the more stable alkene. So, let's see. This is a little bit trickier. Um, I'm going to put the more bulky benzene ring down here. And then this three carbons up here. So that is two types of problems you can see on an exam. Fill in the product, okay, use your tricks, and draw the mechanism. What about fill in the starting material? Can we go backwards and visualize what aldehyde or ketone was used to make this product? The key here is, do you know which one was the attacker? which carbon was the attacker, and which carbon was attacked. The way I have it drawn, remember, the aldehyde or ketone, you're using its alpha carbon to attack, and again, we're always attacking, I like to say, the dot. You could visualize that there used to be an OH group right here, and your two pieces were that piece, the attacker, and this piece with this being a carbonyl. It turns out... Oh, did I make a mistake? Um, I did make a mistake. There should be a methyl group right here. And let me draw the dotted line. In all of these examples, again, we're using one type of starter material. Later on, we're going to do what's called a crossed aldol, but here we're taking the original aldehyde or ketone and attacking another one of itself. So my product should have the same number of carbons on each side of this dotted line. The starter material is just one molecule. It's this one. And you could go through the process. Okay, Let's say this is your guess. You could go through the process, or you could give your study partner ask them, hey, if I give you the starter material with base, what product would you draw? Okay, without knowing, without them knowing the final product. What they would do, or what I would do, is I would draw again another one of itself with a dot, and draw the dotted green arrow to show the connection. Okay, and that's why we need this methyl group. 